Welcome to the Recovery Room. I'm Cancer Physical Therapy Specialist, Dr. Leslie Walke. In this episode, we are discussing the 2019-2020 novel coronavirus pandemic affecting our entire planet and how it may or may not impact you specifically as a person with cancer or a history of cancer. The evidence and information I will be sharing with you comes from the World Health Organization, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, public health experts, and medical oncology professionals. In the description section of this video, I will put the links for the CDC, the WHO, and a link for you to find your local health department. Please note, this information is accurate as of March 15th, 2020. We are in the midst of a large-scale viral outbreak. And yes, this too shall pass. But it may not pass for many weeks or months. So, knowledge is power. Let's learn. The official name of the virus causing all of this havoc is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. The generic name for the virus is 2019 Novel Coronavirus. Corona means crown, and the coronavirus gets this name because of how it looks under the microscope. They have these fun little crown-like structures on them. This particular coronavirus is brand new to humans, so it is called a novel coronavirus. Because it is new, it is precisely why health experts are rightly so concerned. So, the name of the virus is 2019 Novel Coronavirus. This virus causes the illness called Coronavirus 2019 or COVID-19. Because this is a novel or new virus, scientists and public health officials are still learning about it. We do not yet have a vaccine. We do not yet have an antiviral treatment. And no one's immune system has antibodies against it. Additionally, we do not yet fully know exactly how it acts. When is it most contagious? How many people one asymptomatic person is likely to infect? How long it can live outside the body? And how likely is it to kill the person it infects? As we understand the disease currently, what appears to put someone at higher risk of getting severely or critically ill with COVID-19 than the average person is things like being immune suppressed, having heart or lung disease, being diabetic, having high blood pressure, and being over the age of 60. When it comes to your own personal protection as a cancer patient or cancer survivor during this outbreak, a critical thing to consider is if you were to come down with the COVID-19 disease, are you more likely to get severely or critically ill or dying from it? Let's begin by saying that unless you are currently documented to be immune suppressed, just having a history of cancer does not necessarily put you at higher risk of getting seriously ill if you do contract the disease. If, however, you are currently on immunotherapy or chemotherapy drugs that do suppress your immune system, or you have or have had a cancer that directly affects your immune system, like multiple myeloma, lymphoma, or leukemia, getting COVID-19 disease could be very dangerous for you. If you are currently in treatment or have documented immune suppression and have some questions or concerns, you should call your medical oncology office. Confirm with your medical team what symptoms warrant concern and what you should do if you notice them. If you don't know if you are at increased risk or if you are immune suppressed or if you have any questions, call your primary care or medical oncology office and ask. Better knowledge leads to better decisions. This is an unprecedented time in most of our lives, and this experience is unsettling. No, the world is not coming to an end, but it is seriously slowing, and it should. 
The goal of these mass closures is to do two things. First, to delay the onset of the inevitable increase in persons getting COVID-19 disease so our public health planners and hospitals have more time to get ready. That means more time to develop potential medications to treat those most severely impacted, more time to develop a vaccine to protect those not yet infected, and more time to learn about the specifics of how early and how long an infected person is contagious, so we know how long they need to quarantine away from vulnerable populations. Second, and most importantly, these mass closures will decrease the risk of a huge number of people getting sick all at the same time. If there are more sick people than there is safety equipment or hospital beds, that is dangerous for everyone, including if you are hospitalized for a different disease, cancer treatment, or an emergency or non-emergency surgery. If you are having symptoms such as a fever or shortness of breath, at this time, it is recommended that you first call your medical provider for directions for the best course of action in your specific community. Do not go to the emergency department or urgent care without first calling to minimize possible exposure to others. It is a time to be prudent and mindful, but not to panic. Make sure you are getting your information from reliable sources like the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and most importantly, from your own city, county, and state public health departments. Conjecture, opinion, and speculation are irrelevant and mostly useless. These are the things that stoke fear and panic. If you do feel super anxious or if you are panicked and terrified of getting the virus, then do the things recommended to minimize your risk. Stay home or away from groups of people. If you go out, stay at least six feet away from others and wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer. Social distancing is not done out of fear, but as a way to keep our communities and our loved ones safe. Social distancing is the best way to love your neighbor. Ultimately, the greatest tool you have to decrease your risk of being exposed to the virus is you and your behaviors. And before I go, I would be remiss if I did not add, even though your life and schedule are most likely getting disrupted. Yes, you need to continue to eat well, exercise, get fresh air, and find ways to stay connected and in good spirits. I'm Dr. Leslie Waltke from The Recovery Room. Exercise well and care for yourself like you are the most important person on this planet because you are. We'll talk again soon.